In this tutorial, we're going to make a procedural texture uh, using a couple Voronoi nodes that will generate uh, sort of a, a cobblestone walkway, sort of natural stone wall, that kind of, uh, that kind of look. So the first thing we're going to do is delete the uh, default cube and the lamp, and then we'll go in add mesh plane and maybe go into the top mode. All right, so we're going to want to split another panel uh, here. So we're just going to go here and drag down. You'll see that the, uh, the cursor changes when you go up to the corner like that. And then you just click and drag, and that'll split down another panel. And we're going to change this over here to the uh, shader editor. And then we're going to go into our material settings. And we're going to go hit a new material there. And we can call this cobblestone. All right. And then in our shader editor here, we've got our sort of default nodes. And we're going to build some stuff that we're going to plug into the base color and to the uh, normal inputs there to uh, generate our pattern. So the first thing we want to do is add. We're going to go down to texture and we're going to choose Voronoi texture. All right. And so what this does is this is going to generate, we'll just take a look at it. I'm going to plug the color into the base color here and we're going to go into the uh, shaded view. Uh, let's go ahead and throw sunlight in there. Let's go to add light sun and this will just see so we can see it nice and nice and bright. Uh, this is a Voronoi texture or a Voronoi diagram, uh, also known as Voronoi tessellation. Uh, and what this is, is in the center of each of these polygons is a seed point. Uh, and those are generated here in our texture by this randomness. So if we change that to zero, you'll see that then now all of the points are equidistant from each other uh, and it generates squares. But the randomness then sort of moves them around in such a way that uh, they're not equidistant from each other. Uh, then this F1 function here is what actually is going to evaluate uh, the, uh, uh, the sort of space around it, measuring using this distance metric here, uh, all of the points around it. Any of the points that are then sort of closest to that seed point are assigned this color uh, for that particular seed point. The borders between the two different polygons are generated for uh, points that are equidistant from each of these seed points here. And then the points where you have uh, multiple lines converging at a vertex, that means that that point is equidistant from three, point, three of the seed points. So that's sort of some of the math on how that's generated. Um, you have different functions that will generate uh, slightly different patterns. So the F2 function, as you can see, has a different evaluation, gives you different polygons. And then the smooth F1 is the same uh, F1 function here, but then it sort of blurs out uh, the, the distances. So instead of having hard edges, you have that sort of blurry pattern. And those are the two that we're going to utilize here, the F1 and the smooth F1. Uh, we're going to leave our distance metric as Euclidean. Uh, this is your standard Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and then you have these three other options besides that. You have the Manhattan metric. That's also sometimes known as the uh, taxi cab metric. If you think about looking down on a city like New York that's uh, laid out on a grid, uh, if you're in a taxi cab and you want to go from sort of one corner to another, you can't drive through a city block, through all the buildings. You have to stick to the streets. Uh, so you basically can't move on the diagonal. And uh, that is the Manhattan metric. You can see that the distance formula there is a slightly different. So then the next option is the Chebyshev distance. And this is the maximum distance between uh, your X coordinates or your Y coordinates. Uh, and what this ends up doing is actually makes diagonals to be the same distance as sort of a horizontal or vertical mo uh, movement if you were moving on sort of a grid. This happens to be the default rules in D&D for moving uh, minis in combat. So these three different metrics will generate different patterns for us that depending on what we're trying to make uh, might be uh, advantageous to use one or the other. 
uh, like I said, we're going to use the Euclidean uh, metric. The, uh, the fourth option is the Minkowski metric, and that is actually a generalization of the other three, where uh, this exponent, if it's set to 1, gives you the Manhattan distance. If you set it to 2, you end up with the uh, Euclidean distance. And if you take the limit as it goes to infinity, you get the Chebyshev distance. Now, this is a computer, so the computer doesn't understand infinity, so it thinks that infinity is 32. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, so uh, for what we're going to do here, we just want the Euclidean distance. Uh, and so we're going to leave that as it is, and we're going to need two of these Voronoi texture nodes in order to accomplish what we want. So select that, hit Shift D to duplicate, and that'll give us a second one. We're going to change that over to uh, the, F, the smooth F1, and we're going to combine these two things to make our stones. So uh, the next pieces that we need uh, are going to be a couple of color ramps to pull the color here, combine that into uh, a single color piece that's going to go into there. So let's go add, we're going to go converter, choose color ramp, and we're going to just drop that in between that Voronoi there, and then we'll select that, shift D to duplicate, and drop another one down here, pull the color from this uh, second node in here, we're going to need a uh, mix RGB from color, mix RGB, drop that in there, and then we'll pull this into the second one, and we're going to leave that on mix, and we'll leave the factor at 0.5 for right now. At the moment, we'll just leave these as is. We're going to tweak those later, uh, but we need to set up the, uh, the bump map that's going to actually make these look like they're three-dimensional stones as opposed to just blobs on a uh, plane. So I'm going to want to go into Add, and then we're going to choose, let's see here, we want Vector, Bump. I'm going to drop that over here, and then we're going to need a couple other uh, math nodes in order to do some stuff with the, uh, the distance information that's coming out of these uh, Voronoi's. So add, we're going to go down to converter, choose math, drop that in, and then we're going to shift D, duplicate that. We're going to need two of these because we're going to have these do separate things. So first off, we want to change the first one over to divide, then pull the distance out of each of these, plug them in here, okay, take the result of that, that value, and plug that into here, and we want to change this to power, okay, and we're going to change the exponent here to 3, we're going to cube that, and then take this value and plug it into the height, and we'll take the normal and plug it into here. And you should start to see some interesting stuff happening. So we want to just change this distance real quick. All right. And we need to change, make some changes over here. We want to change the smoothness on our smooth, because right now it's sort of blurring a little bit too much. And so we're going to want to set that to a much more reasonable level. So okay, let's hit 0.2 on that. And now we're starting to see, uh, let's see what's happening here. So if we just you know, sort of drag on the smoothness, you can see that that's adjusting sort of how much that edge works there. Okay, so now what we want to do is play with the, uh, the color ramps here and sort of sharpen this up. Let's start by Moving this up here a little bit, and that's going to sort of sharpen the edges of our little rocks. And then on this one, let's try bringing this down a little bit, and that should also just sort of lighten things up a little bit and make them a little more uniform. And uh, 
let's increase the scale here. Uh, we're going to want the scale to match on each of these. So let's go ahead and just add an input value. And this way we can tie this one value to the same thing here. And let's do like 35. And now we're starting to see what we're getting here. So one thing to do that's kind of fun would be to change the coloring on this just a little bit. So let's make this a little bit bluish color here and then switch out this one and make it a little bit more like a yellowish color. Let's darken that up a little bit. Same on this one. Let's darken this up a little bit. All right, so now we're starting to get a, a pretty good little texture here. Just by playing with uh, these sliders here, you can make adjustments, sort of fine adjustments on the, uh, the way that this color is being applied to the texture. But that's the basic idea. So now it's just all fine tuning so that it looks good to your eye. Uh, you might want to say, do a little bit with the smoothness here, take that down some, and then up the, uh, the distance here just a little bit. Playing with those is going to uh, so then yield a, a, the, uh, the best looking thing. So let's uh, actually invert this again, see what that looks like. Not much different. And you can also play with the strength. If you want to sort of thin it out a little bit more and make it look like there's sort of mortar in between them. But there you go. That is the basics of how you make a uh, procedurally generated uh, cobblestone texture using a couple of Voronoi texture nodes. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I have other tutorials in the works, so uh, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on them. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Cheers.